メジャー翻訳速報 NLCS 第2戦まさに目が離せない展開でしたねメッツが序盤から怒涛の攻撃で7対3と勝利正直投手の故障など厳しいところはありますがシリーズはこれからが本番です投手陣の調子打線の爆発力など気になる点がたくさんありましたね皆さんはどう感じましたか是非よかったらコメント欄で教えてください今回はこちらの内容を詳しく解説している番組を日本語翻訳してお届けいたしますそれではご覧ください Hello, welcome to Access Sportsnet Dodgers. John Hartung alongside Jerry Hairston Jr., Nomar Garcia Parr. The Dodgers dropped game two of this National League Championship Series to the Mets. Tried to go with another bullpen game, which worked so beautifully for them in game four of that division series against the Padres, really saved their season. But it was the complete opposite today. It was a disastrous start to this game. They gave up one run in the first, five more in the second inning. And the Dodgers offense tried to chip away, but it's hard to win games, Jerry, when the top five guys in the lineup go 0 for 19. Yeah, you know, it wasn't ideal. Obviously, with, with the offense kind of sputtering、uh, to start. And obviously, t h e y jumping on us right away. One in the first and five spot. That really hurt us. But hey, credit the Mets. They came in, especially at, after the beating they had last night. They found a way to score runs early, and that was enough. And make no mistake, Dodgers did have their chances, but this is going to be a, a pretty good series. Yeah, you mentioned about the bullpen, and they knew there was going to be a bullpen game, but it was just a little bit different, I think, about as far as the guys they went to, you know, right after the first inning. No surprise, Brazier starting the game. He's done it before when you're looking at a bullpen game. Excellent job. But then what we've seen, even though after giving up just that one run, it was good. Okay, one run, games, a lot of game left, that they ended up going to the long guy right away and landed Knack. Where the last game they were talking about, we're going to see how the game plays out. Maybe some more higher leverage guys try to see who has control of this game before you go to someone like that. And really, that second inning, I think, really just changed the whole dynamic of the game. Unfortunately, Landon Knack just didn't have it today. You know, his, he didn't have a really good feel of his pitches, his curveball side, kind of bull germ. Fastball's high, curveball's hanging, and they took advantage of that. But on the flip, Side. I also think from the Mets side, they also, Manaya had a really good pitching performance against the Dodgers. They really had trouble getting things going, even when they had opportunities. I mean, they did have nine at best runners in scoring position, but they couldn't really find that big hit, though, too, that could possibly change the momentum. They definitely bought, but didn't have that one that we were really looking for. We were like, there's that big one, maybe hitting a double play, hit the ball sharply, but couldn't find it. Dodgers pitching staff coming off three consecutive shutout wins, 33 consecutive scoreless innings. We knew the streak was going to end at least at some point, no more, and it did early. First hitter of the game, first batter of the game, Francisco Lindor takes Ryan Brazier. Remember, fans, each night if Dodgers pitchers strike out at least seven batters, everyone will get a free Jumbo Jack the following day, a Jack in the Box with the purchase of a large drink only at LA area restaurants. Unfortunately, the Dodgers came up one shy today. But there's another chance coming up in game three of this National League Championship Series when Walker Buehler gets the ball. The Mets take this one 7 3 to even up the NLCS at a game apiece. Let's head inside and hear from Dave Roberts with the media. Hey, Dave, just what was missing with Landon today in that second inning?、Um, I, I just felt today he、uh, wasn't sharp、um, overall,、um, specifically the secondary. Um, I, I thought in that second inning, there was a bad walk in there to Alvarez.、Um, you know, you get Taylor 0 2, and、uh, you hang a breaking ball for the double. And then right there,、uh, you know, we had an opportunity to minimize damage. And、uh, you get count leverage, you got Ventos 1 2, and,、um, you know, then he gets it to 3 2, and then you make a mistake with your heater. And then, you know, that was a big hit, clearly. Was the plan to always go to him earlier in、yeah. today's game? Yeah, it was the plan to go to him and, you know, take down、uh, the most outs tonight, today. When that inning starts kind of going off the rails a little bit, like, do you consider going to one of the higher leverage guys at that point, or just with how things were set up today, were you trying to save them a little bit till later in the game? Yeah,、um, I, I really wasn't. I mean, I think in that situation, you still got to be able to finish the game, and you're talking about the second inning right there.、Um, And so you have a guy on the mound that has to eat up innings. And yeah, you go to anyone else, we're not going to be able to finish the game. So、uh, I think, as far as kind of where we're at, it never feels good losing.、Um, but to feel that you've got your, your leverage guys、uh, ready to go for the next three games,、uh, I feel really good about that. So it was as least costly、uh, as it could be because of、uh, what Honeywell did, Banda, Henriquez did.、Um, 
and so that was certainly helpful. And you know, offensively, we got a chance to see their guys, their leverage guys, and force some up downs. And I think that was beneficial too. Can you go here to one in front? Dave, kind of just curious. In that game against the Padres, you guys kind of went high leverage guy after high leverage guy, and kind of saved Nag there for the end. Like, what was different about maybe this matchup or this particular game that you guys decided to go with Nag? I, I think today, uh, what was different is we don't have Vesia. Um, Hudson was down, and that that's probably the biggest kind of impetus for having to or knowing you're going to have to take some outs from Nag, or else you just can't finish the game. And what you see out of Honeywell, and what role can he kind of play as a series? He did exactly uh, what we needed. Um, he allowed us to kind of eat up, chew up some innings, keep us in the ball game. Um, you know, he's just kind of a guy that we just trust. And so to be able to get left and right out, you know, those are games, innings that a guy like that gives us that gives the best chance to win the, the, the following ensuing game. So, um, it's not lost on anyone in that clubhouse what Honey did for us, and Henrique is as well. Can you go to Bill on the I, left? Dave, given that I know you said you have all your high leverage guys now available for the next game, but you have a day off tomorrow. You had a day off two days ago. You mostly had a bullpen day off yesterday. Why would you not go to those guys first, knowing this is October and you know this is the time to step up? Um, you just can't. You're going to have, Nack was going to have to pitch at some point in time. So um, whether you get through, you know, you have four high leverage guys available, right? Um, you have to be able to kind of still finish four innings of a game or three innings of a game. And so you got to be able to get into the game at some point too. Again, we didn't, we don't have Vesia. Hudson was down. So um, you got to get out somehow. And then if you do need to run another bullpen game in game six, would it be similar to today, or did you learn anything that might inform you? You know what, honestly, Bill, I have no idea. Um, right now, um, you know, just trying to process today, make sure that we learn from some of the things that we got to get better at. Um, and then, you know, we have Walker going tomorrow um, with a fresh leveragey pen and focus on winning game three. Okay, Dylan. Uh, Dave, uh, what did you see from Otani tonight? Okay. Um, I, I thought he didn't look comfortable uh, versus Manaya. Um, the heaters away. Uh, it just You can see he was just kind of trying to keep the ball away from Shohei. Um, that's what they're going to do. Uh, Shohei's very good with the ball close to him. Um, so they're just going to you know stay away, hard away. And if it's spin, it's going to be away. Um, just didn't feel comfortable. And then after that, I thought the righties that came in, you know, they weren't about to give in too many. At least he took his walks. I mean, given the fact, right, he's, I think, 0-4-19 now with the bases empty, right, and getting guys on base, they have to challenge him a little bit more. Any thought into moving him down the order? Um, not really. You know, I, I think that, you know, as far as on the offensive side, I think we've been pretty good offensively. Um, I think the guys at the bottom have been doing a nice job of getting on base. Um, you know, and, and as far as moving him down, I just don't want to be too reactive. I don't really see the benefit we got to just make sure that our guys are just still swinging the bat well and quite frankly i want shohei to get five at bats a game you know so i think uh, he's our best here and i want him up there five times far left jp hey dave um is gavin lux okay was he healthy enough to play did the situation just not present itself uh he was not healthy enough to start uh to run to play defense um i had him ready um for that ds spot in the eighth uh, if it was, I felt it was leverage enough for him to hit. Um, once they scored the extra run in the uh, the top half of the ninth, I just felt that I'm gonna, I'm not gonna, you know, risk putting Gavin in a little bit more harm's way. Um, and so I felt Pajes was was uh, was the best option in that moment. Ken, Dave, the bullpen game worked so well. Game four, of the DS. Does today demonstrate to you the difficulty of what you're trying to accomplish? The low margin for error. It, it absolutely does. Um, you know, it, it all is great when it works well and, and, you know, guys are throwing up zeros, but, you know, you're still facing really good ball clubs. And, you know, there is a margin that you have to guard against and kind of really appreciate the cost of the next games and not forgetting that this isn't a, uh, 
winner-take-all game. It's not a three-game series, so those are things that I have to be mindful of. Um, you know, leverage, plus, minus. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I think that, yeah, you're, you're right, Kenny, is, you know, when you're on the margins and you lose a couple guys and guys aren't available, you got to figure out how to get out somehow. Okay, we're going to take one more here. We'll go back to Jack in the front row. <laughs> It was Hudson just down because of rest, or not? he just had some things that he couldn't pitch today. Anything concerning moving forward, or um, I don't think so. He should be with two days. He should be ready to go for Game Three. Okay, thanks, Doc. Thanks, guys. So first, just with what Sean and I was doing, obviously you guys were able to get to him later into the game. What are you seeing early, and what adjustments did you kind of have to make in game with that one? Um. He was good. He was locating. Um, he was getting in on the righties, and I felt like, uh, um, you know, we were just having the, from the the right-handed side, we were having a little trouble pushing him out, and uh, you know, he just kept executing in there, and um, you know, he was just tough. I know as much as each loss at this point of the year is very frustrating, but I feel like there might be a few positives that you can take with this. Getting to Edwin Diaz late in the game, seeing some really high leverage bullpen arms. Can you kind of take those as positives as you head into Game Three? Yeah, I mean, you have to. Um, the loss sucks, but you know, we were just couple swings away from absolutely blowing it open and mm -hmm. um, you know they executed some pitches and we didn't we didn't execute the at bat but you know we saw their guys um, you know it's it's always it's always good to see see their guys especially when you know we have we don't see them a ton so uh, you know you, you try to take something out of it and you know how to keep a level head especially in these situations having been there before yeah, I mean it's, it's a long series, you know. The, you don't you don't win or lose a series in one game, especially early on. So, um, you know, you just you you move on. We got to work out tomorrow, um, and then you show up the next day, and it's oh. Is it easy to move on or not? How difficult is it? Uh, thankfully, we have some good guys in this clubhouse. Um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna make sure everyone's in the right headspace moving forward, and you know, that's just the most important thing. How important is it to? Keep that thought in mind that it is a long series, and, and talk about with that amongst your teammates. Yeah, man, you just got to reinforce it. It's, uh, um, you know, like I said, the loss sucks, but you can't sit there and cry about it. You still got a bunch more games to play, and um, you know, you just got to make sure that you're you're ready to go. And that's why it's a good thing. There's an off day tomorrow. You have a workout. You show up, and uh, you make sure you get good work in, and then you go in the next day. And it's like I just said, it's a it's a oh series at that point. You know, like I was telling them, I think I think baseball just kind of happened in front of us a little bit. Um, I mean, they're not a bad team. You know, that, they did their job, but we had the opportunities to go get them. And you know, sometimes baseball happens, and you know, they kept putting good swings on the ball. Is the main thing. You know, we didn't roll over. We tried to capitalize, and just didn't work out like we had hoped for. But we pushed them across one. Why were you able to have such success, three scoreless innings, when you came out? And obviously, your first taste of the postseason so far. That's right. Well, I mean, I've, uh, execution. You know, I knew what my job was there, right then and there, and to keep us in the game. I mean, these are games that, you know, I know for a fact that we can swing our way back into any game. Um, you know, no matter who's, no matter who's on the hill. I mean, you know, I thought Manaya threw the ball well against us, and once we got him out of there, we kind of mounted the rally a little bit, and then. You know, it is what it is. I just want to keep us in the game, give us a chance to win, and keep the dogs at bay out there. Did it seem like you guys were kind of building momentum late in the game, though? Obviously, we saw the energy from you. Uh, just some at bats, felt like you guys were kind of building something, just weren't able to kind of get that final one. Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, there's we can swing our way back into any game. And knowing that is... I think we talked about it the other day is pressure off of us, you know, and and in a six nothing or a six one ball game at the time, it's you know it is what it is. Keep them where they're at. You know they're going to go up there. They're still going to take good at bats, but you know, just execute, continue to go out there, execute, and let these guys do what they can. Can you just tell us the importance of just eating some innings, considering you guys were down in this game, but also wanting to protect the high leverage arms for big moments that are going to come in this series? Yeah, I mean it's a seven game series, so you know you, that's what you want to do. Um, I think that's probably the best I've felt throwing the ball since I've been here. Um, but the situations, like I pitched to the, the situation, and like I said, keeping those guys at bay down there, I like doing that. And 
you know, there isn't – Doc and these guys have put me in every situation I can possibly be in to be able to do that and just kind of Swiss Army my way through there and work a lineup a little bit, turn it up, get a double play turn, and working with Will. I mean, I, I think I miss that the most, working with Will and working with Barnsley. I mean, it's, it's fun. Baseball's fun, and these are two good teams, obviously. And I thought both teams played decent baseball, and there was opportunity on both sides. And, you know, we couldn't we couldn't get the big swing off, but I know we can. With the snake, did it surprise you a bit? And I also heard you saw an alligator in a dugout once in 2015 or something. Yeah, I've seen all kinds of stuff in a dugout before, but I mean, I walked off and I saw it. And I was like, there's a snake right there. I don't know if you guys, I don't think Danny saw it. Yeah, was right next to him. But like I said, I was hoping it was a rally snake. We pushed him across right after that. and yeah. Just quickly, what were you seeing just from the arms today and kind of any takeaways you had just from how the Mets were aggressive today and how they were able to get to you guys? Uh, I mean, we really just had the one bad inning. Um, obviously, you know, the leadoff homer didn't help, but uh, yeah, just the one bad inning. Other than that, they thought they pitched pretty well. What was, I guess, kind of just the focus of the game plan then in which you guys were looking to navigate through them today? Uh... I mean, I think the game plan was correct. It was just, you know, mixed executed pitches. Um, some walks, some big hits, obviously, you know, the grand slam. Um, yeah. Landon said he didn't have his best stuff today. Is that what you noticed catching him? It just seemed like he was getting ahead of guys, especially there to, to be in touch. He just couldn't put him away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, I thought his slider was really good today. Um, and his heater, yeah, I didn't have as much teeth to it. His curveball, you know, he hung the one to Taylor. Um, and then his changeup, we just couldn't really get it going. So... Yeah, I mean, it was probably not his best stuff, but he went out there and competed. Um, yeah. No, oh, okay. no, they have to talk about it's not kind of how you start, but how you finish. Mm -hmm. Just seeing how you guys were able to kind of at least get some traffic around mm -hmm. the bases, things like that. Do you feel like you can kind of use that as a, a building block heading into game three? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, we feel like as a team, we're never out of the fight. Mm -hmm. um, we were one, you know, one big swing away from tying it up or taking the lead. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, just keep giving ourselves opportunities like that. Uh, yeah. I guess to piggyback off that, you have to use any of your high leverage relievers in these first two games. You're going to have them well rested now going into New York. Is that an advantage, I guess, in your favor? Yeah, they haven't seen them, I guess. Um, you know, I expect those guys, when their name's called, to come out and execute and, uh, you know, dominate. You know, first time ever going through it, and you're trying to go, okay, we know rehab and recovery is never linear, so it's going to go up and down. And he's like, okay, I may have finished on the down, not able to go, but he's like to say, I'm going to make sure I can come back so I can go. That's why I went through this. All right, Mets take game two by the final of 7-3. to three. Let's head inside right now and hear from Kike Hernandez with Kirsten and the media. Yes, Kike. frustration the word that could be used for you and your teammates now? Uh, maybe, but, uh, I mean... I wouldn't say I'm frustrated. You know, I I just I didn't come through. That's what it is. Um, long series, and I know I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a lot more chances to, to come through for the team. And uh, you know, just understand that. You know, in baseball, you, you know that in baseball, you're either gonna succeed or you're gonna fail. And today, I didn't succeed. And you know, we. The good thing is that we get to come back on Wednesday and do it all over again. Thank you. Is there something too, just as much as uh, you guys did start a little bit slower, being able to bounce back towards the end, but then also being to see like seeing high leverage arms from them and being able to take in some information as you prepare to go to New York. Yeah, I think uh, you know we I think we we did a we did a good job throughout the game of you know creating creating chaos, creating traffic. Uh, we were one swing away in a lot of innings, and we weren't able to get that that one last big hit to uh, to you know either tie the game or take the lead. And um, you know they held they held us in check. They um, I had two really big at bats, and I didn't come through. I had some really good pitches to hit, and you know I just it just didn't go my way today. And you know try to stay positive, try to get some rest tomorrow, and come ready to play on Wednesday. Get it really quick. Um, regaining the uh, you know the momentum going to New York for, for three games. What does that, you know, that thought process and, and unification look like for the team? The same. I mean, we feel good about it. We've been feel, feeling good about our team. Um, we, we can't let one game tell us that, you know, stuff is not going our way or that we're not playing good baseball. You know, like I said, we, we throughout the game, we had a lot of chances. We were one, one swing away in a lot of times, and we just didn't get that one hit. So it's not like, you know, we, we had no chance tonight or today. And, you know, just regroup and tomorrow get some rest and come ready on Wednesday. ドジャースが今日の試合で痛い一敗を喫しました。NLCS 第2戦。
メッツに7対3で敗れちゃいましたね先発を決めずに挑んだ作戦が裏目に出た感じです開始早々1点取られ2回には一挙5点これはきつかった打線も上位がさえずチャンスで潰れる場面が目立ちましたでも終盤に見せた粘りには希望が持てます次の試合ではこの粘りを生かせるはずシリーズは1勝1敗の5分次はビューラーが投げるのでここからが本当の勝負ですねチーム一丸となって立て直しを図ってほしいところです今回の動画はここまでですこの動画が面白いと思っていただけたらチャンネル登録高評価よろしくお願いします次回の動画でまたお会いしましょうご視聴ありがとうございました。